So uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, again, my name is Mike Mueller. Uh, I'm a hall director here on campus. Uh, I'm also the advisor for DESAGA, which is our Diverse Sexuality and Gender Alliance group here on campus. Uh, so what I'll be doing today is I'll be talking uh, first a monologue, which was presented last year during our queer monologues, uh, and then I'll be talking a little bit about gender identity, uh, sexual orientation, and all that comes with that giant topic. So uh, <clears throat> from the PowerPoint, you can see uh, this, the monologue's called A Brother's Love, so I'll just uh, take it away and, and see what happens, okay? <clears throat> My brother and I were the best of friends. We were born twins, and ever since I can remember, we spent every waking moment making life hell for the other person. Uh, itching powder in your pants, uh, saran wrapping the other car. Uh, one time, he even wrestled me into submission in front of my eighth grade girlfriend. Not fun. All in all, that's just how we show love and care for each other. So let's fast forward to the quote unquote best years of our lives, high school. I set out to define myself as the jock. I joined the soccer team and the wrestling team, and I kicked ass at both. After freshman year, I'd made varsity, and I was well on my way to becoming a star athlete. That's when me and my brother started to drift. So you see, he joined the football team and was making his own friends and his own name for himself, and that's it. It wasn't this huge implosion of the universe as if we were breaking a strong brother brotherly bond. It just was. As we started to drift, we kind of drifted towards different parents. I hung out more with my dad, and he taught me, you know, how to change the oil, how to hunt, how to defend the vast number of women that I would date. My brother drifted more towards my mom. Uh, he just enjoyed talking to her and reading way more books than I did. It's not that my dad didn't teach my brother all those things, it's just my brother preferred hanging with my mom more. But one thing my, my brother did pick up from my dad is that he loved working on cars. He loved tinkering and taking apart engines, and I swear, by the time high school ended, he had taken apart a Camaro's engine 20 plus times. And that was it. You know, it was two star athletes of their school and their manly hobbies, right? Gosh, some of the best years of my life were like spending time down in the basement, eating pizza with my brother and all of our friends, playing the game, who would you screw? You've played it, right? You know that Jessica Alba or Jessica Simpson, or Oprah Winfrey and Ellen DeGeneres. That is until someone said Mark Wahlberg or Leonardo DiCaprio. Crickets. Until one of my friends said, we ain't no queers, and that was it. That was my view on the whole gay straight debate. I'm not gay, no one I know is gay, so why should I give a shit? Not one of my finer moments. I mean, why didn't I stop the spreading of ignorance? Why didn't I speak up for love? I will forever remember that moment as a time in which I failed as a person. Luckily, I was given an opportunity to redeem myself my senior year. You see, my dad, as this transition to manhood, took me and my brother out hunting with our grandpa's old antique rifles. So we're sitting there in a tree stand, and my brother just looks at me and says, I'm gay. And I look back at him, a thousand thoughts running through my mind at a speed that is impossible to comprehend. And then it hits me like a punch in the gut. And I take that deep breath and I look at him and I say, cool. And we both smile. Because it finally hit me that no matter who he likes, loves, or screws, it is his own damn business. Because at the end of the day, he is still the brother I grew up with. The one that I used to tease and prank with. And I will love him unconditionally. So really one thing that I wanted to, to, to demonstrate with that is that a lot of people tie sexual orientation and, and gender identity and all of those things together, and they look at that aspect as part of a person. And gender identity, gender expression, sexual orientation, they don't have to be part of that person as long as you just accept them for who they are holistically as an individual. So uh, to, to lead into that, uh, I'll, I'll start talking about this uh, in a minute, but I wanted to, to kind of give you the, some, some understanding of who I am as a person so that you know that I have some understanding of the topic. Um, I'll be completely honest. Uh, I got passionate about this uh, in college, but in high school, it's because I was ignorant. Uh, I used terms like gay and fag and queer all the time because I thought it was cool. But what I didn't realize is it alienates so many people. 
So as I got to college and I began to learn more and more about who I was and who I want to represent, I realized, wow, I was dumb. So that's kind of where this passion falls in, is I started in high school being super ignorant, uh, so I started to, to learn as much as I possibly could about it. And this is by no means an expert's perspective. I still learn new things every day. So please don't look at me and say, this is the, this is the, the word according to Mike. It, it isn't. It's, it's information that I have read, and I thought, hey, that's informational, and that is good. So uh, without, without, yeah. Uh, so one thing, I, I, to, to help give the, the understanding of this topic, I, I thought about it, and I found this really cool graphic, and it's a gender-bred person. I was like, yeah, that's cool. So uh, I'm actually going to start on the next page. And the gender-bred person, it, it, the way that, okay, I'm, the way that it breaks down is, if you look at it, there's four different aspects of a person. Their gender identity, which is in their head. Their gender expression, which is how they show themselves. Their biological sex, which is right here. And then attraction. And some people think attraction is sexual orientation. And those words can be synonymous. But sexual orientation kind of pigeonholes it, thinking, oh, that's a choice. And a lot of times, it's not a choice. It's what your heart feels like. I have never been told, hey, you chose to like that person. Nope, that's just kind of how I feel. That's internally what happened. So I'm going to start with attracted to. And you, again, you can use it synonymously with gender or sexual, orienta or sexual orientation. Uh, but I'm going to say attracted to. So as we look at this spectrum, can everybody see this? OK, so as we look at this spectrum, uh, you can be attracted to nobody. You can be attracted to the men, male, masculine form, or the female, woman, feminine form. And those dials or those spectrums are completely independent. So you may have this dial all the way up and this dial not up at all. So you're attracted to men. You could be considered, if, I, if, I was a, if that's me, I would be a straight male. But if my, both of my dials go up a little bit, I could, be I could be considered bisexual. If both dials are up a good chunk of the way, I could be considered pansexual, which means I like everyone individually as a person. I'm not necessarily looking at, at who they are biologically or gender identity-wise. I'm just, I love people and their personality. So uh, there are five examples, straight, gay, pansexual. Asexual is one that people, people think that uh, asexuality means that, oh, you don't, you don't love anybody, which isn't true. You can love anybody you want. Asexuality means you're not physically attracted to anybody. You can still maintain relationships, you can still maintain companionship, but that physical attraction and that desire to be physically attracted isn't present. So moving on from attracted to, we talk about biological sex. So we see biological sex is essentially, at birth, the physical part of your body. So when you come out, what do you have? Do you have a penis, testes, vagina, ovaries, do you have both? Those are, that's what biological sex is. And the funny thing is, is at birth, if you, if you are born and they don't know, they choose. They just guess. So a lot of people tie gender identity of who you are as a male to your sexual, your, your, your sexual organs. That's not necessarily true because some of it's subjective. So if you think about it, uh, males would have penis, testes, and they would be, fall more on that maleness spectrum. Uh, females, the opposite, ovaries, uh, vagina, where intersex, you may not have any clear, present sexual organs. And if, you're, if your parents chose not to, to, to define one or the other, then you, could, you would be classified as intersex. This used to be classified as uh, a hermaphrodite, which is actually a negative term. So in case anybody is curious, we don't use that term anymore. It's intersex. So an, another thing is a female self-ID and a male self-ID, where you kind of have both, but you identify more towards one than the other. OK. So that's attracted to in biological sex. So I'm going to try to go back and talk about gender identity and gender expression. <coughs> gender identity, and it's really, it, this, is, this is the best part. So if, if biological sex is what's here, gender identity is what's here. Gender identity is what you think as a, as, as a person you are. Are you womanness or are you maleness? 
So if I sat up here and spoke and I said I identify as a woman, my gender identity would be woman, but my biological sex would be man. Can you see how this can get confusing? Nobody answer? There you go, okay, yeah. Yeah, this is, it's really confusing because the, the crazy thing is, is that's just that person. We haven't even talked about expression, which is how they show it to the world. So gender identity, uh, you can be a woman, man, two-spirited, uh, and this, this comes from the Native Americans, in which you have both male and female identities inside your body. So a person feels two-spirit. They feel both male and female at the same time. Uh, and then a lot of times, uh, to, when, the, when those scales are, are, are at a place in which they can't define it, male, female, uh, genderless, or two-spirited, they go gender queer. And a lot of people cringe at that queer word. Uh, queer is, is an acceptable term to refer to the entire LGBTQAI community. Queer is, is a term that they're, they're taking back to, to help solidify that community. It's, it's e much easier to say LGBTQAI. So uh, that's gender identity, so what they feel uh, up in here. Gender expression is how they show themselves. I am expressing myself in a masculine form. I have pants, I have boots, I have a, a button-down shirt and a tie. That's a masculine form. Now, if I came up here with a scarf and a skirt, I'd be expressing myself in a feminine form. How, how much time do I have? Okay, so I'd be expressing myself in, in a, a feminine form. So a lot of times when people, people the, the term butch lesbian is, I'm going, I'm gonna stereotype here for a minute. A butch lesbian is someone who identifies as probably womanness. their gender identity is woman, their physical, biological sex is woman, but their gender expression would be man. So some of the things, the, the butch, the femme, androgynous are those individuals who dress in a way in which you cannot guess their gender. There was an old uh, sketch, I think, on SNL or Mad TV that had Pat, the androgynous. Does anybody remember that? Okay. So it's, it's, it was some individual that they would talk, and you're like, is that a guy? Is it a girl? You never really knew. That's androgynous, in which you can't define male or female. And then uh, you have gender neutral, which is somebody who doesn't define on either scale. They appear to have no interest in expressing what their gender is. So those are the four things. If you were to classify me standing up here right now, I would be, gender identity would be a male, my gender expression would be male, my biological sex is a male, my sexual orientation is bisexual. That's something that you can't guess. So it's interesting to think, when you, when you sit there and you're like, oh, that person's gay, cool, they're attracted to someone who is a male. But what does that mean for their expression and their identity and their biological sex? This gets really confusing when you start to look at all of them together. And there's a lot of good speakers and a lot of good people out there who've done a lot of good talks. This specifically comes from uh, Sam Killingman, Killingham, Killerman, there we go. Uh, who did a TED Talk um, on understanding the complexities of genders. And the best thing about Sam is that he's a comedian. He's a comedian and a social advocate, uh, social justice advocate. So I encourage you, look, look up that YouTube because he does a, a, a phenomenal job at demonstrating the complexities of these four topics into something that is so easily understood. So walking away from this, what, what I hope that you get is that when you look at someone and you're like, oh, that's a guy, what are you saying? Are you saying they present themselves as a guy? Are you saying that they have a penis? Are you saying that they're masculine? What are you saying when you say that's a guy? Cool, thanks. <laughs>